Hello, today we will talk about education in Germany, also about scholarship and also about foreign student and all about living in Germany as a foreign to study in Germany. And I have special guests. He's a dean and professor in Germany Law School. Let's take a look about his profile. Mr. Patrick C. R. Terry is a Dean of the Faculty of Law and Professor of Law, University of Public Administration, Cal German. He was a judge in the state of Baden-Württemberg, Germany. For more than nine years, he holds four law degrees, a PhD in Public International Law and a Master of Laws degree in International Law and International Relations, both awarded by the University of Penn in the United Kingdom, as well as two German law degrees awarded by the Ministry of Justice in Stuttgart and the University of Tübingen. He speak in five different languages and have attained limited working proficiency in both Russian and French. He published more than 23 article and journal. He joined in for international organization act as the world. Hi Mr. Patrick, please welcome to Broom Show and how are you today? Fine, thank you very much. How are you? Thanks for having me. I am really amazing. I really appreciate your time. I know that you're really, really busy as a dean, as a professor. You have so many schedules to flew abroad and, you know, to become a lecturer and to your law school as well. And then studying German was really, really one of the most favorite place for students, especially for my country, because I have some of friends from my high school who study in Germany. And then I curious because so many people talk to me and then I read from the article that study in Germany is free. Is that real or is it just an issue? Whether it's free? Um, well, it depends, of course, as always. Um, so in Germany, 90% of students study at state universities and 10% of students study at private universities. Now, of course, the private universities do charge fees. Whether you're a German citizen or not, you will have to pay between 3,000 and 10,000 euro a study year. Uh, state universities don't charge any fees uh, as long as you are a German citizen, a citizen of the European Union, or a permanent resident, even if you are a non-EU citizen. But one has to realize that in Germany, higher education is a matter for the 16 federal states. So as far as the detailed rules are concerned, it always depends in which state your university is located. Now, why am I saying that? Because as far as fees for non-EU citizens who are not permanent residents are concerned, that differs from state to state. So, for example, the state where I live, Baden-Württemberg, you are required as a non-EU citizen to pay a fee of 3,000 euro a study year. If you study in the largest federal state, in North Rhine-Westphalia, no fees have to be paid. So what you have to do is, if you're interested in a university, you should always inquire in which state is that university located, and then you need to find out whether the state charges fees from non-EU citizens. Because if you are an EU citizen, you don't have to pay any fees anyway. So that's... It sounds interesting, but for foreign, still got tuition, right? Tuition? Yes. Tuition fee? Yes, yes, 3,000. As I said, it depends on the state. So, for example, in my state, you will have to pay 3,000 euro a year to the university for mm -hmm. tuition. Mm -hmm. But in North Rhine-Westphalia, if you are a non-EU citizen, you don't have to pay anything. I see. That's because in Germany, higher education is a matter for the individual federal state. It's I not see. done by the federal government, but the, there are 16 federal states in Germany, you know, similar to the United States, just less, 16 states, and they decide 
what happens at their universities. And that's wow. why the rules differ from state to state. That's amazing. But, you know, what, what do you think, like, why so many people really want to study in Germany? Like, what's make Germany, it's different, like their curriculum or their system of education and makes uh, foreign want to study in Germany? Or maybe it's about the government itself, about like Germany the whole life or maybe about the people. Well, I think, first of all, German universities have, have quite a good reputation. Mm -hmm. um, then I also think that um, they're, you know, in comparison to other countries, and we'll come to that later, if I understand you correctly, there are quite a few funding opportunities. Um, then um, also in Germany, there are an increasing number of degree courses offered in English, especially at the master level. And even if you have to pay tuition fees, um, they are much lower than, for example, in the United Kingdom or the United States. So even if you have to pay 3,000 euro a year, that's, of course, much less than you would have to pay in other states, in other countries. Then, of course, potentially you have uh, exciting st student life, especially if you decide to study in one of the larger cities like Berlin or Munich. But even if you decide uh, or opt for a smaller university town like Tübingen, it's still the student life is very vibrant because, for example, Tübingen only has 90,000 people living there. 27,000 of them are students. So, of course, the town is completely dominated by student life. And that's why, of course, uh, that can be very attractive. Another reason for studying in Germany for many is that it's a good location uh, for getting to know Europe, because uh, once you have obtained a student visa, uh, that visa is valid for 25 other European states. So if you want to travel within the Schengen area in Europe, you do not need another visa. You can simply travel with the visa you obtained from Germany. And of course, Germany is centrally located and itself borders on nine other state countries. So it's very easy to travel about, which is a big advantage. Then generally Germany in comparison to many other countries is a safe and stable country. Uh, and lastly, uh, I, of course, interesting perhaps also for students from your country, Germany has a severe shortage of skilled labor, which means that, you know, they're quite likely that there will be job, job opportunities at the end of a degree course. That's amazing. And then my friends, when they prepare to study in Germany, they give or they put course about German language. Is it really the requirement to study in German that you need to speak Germany? No, it depends on the, on the degree course you opt for. So if you uh, decide that you, uh, which, you know, it's, it's probably something to be recommended. Uh, if you opt for an English language degree course, then of course you need to provide proof that you have sufficient knowledge of the English language. Should you, however, opt for a German language degree course, which is possible, then of course you need to prove that your German, knowledge of German is sufficient to master the degree course. I see. So, um, so many countries that they not allow the, the foreign student to work uh, in their country because, you know, their visa is just for a student. When they hold a student visa, visa, they cannot work on that country. So it's in Germany, they allow foreign students to be able to work in Germany? Yes. So basically, you also only get a student visa where if you come to Germany to study. Um, if you're an EU citizen, there are no limits anyway. Um, if you are a non-EU citizen, for example, an Indonesian citizen, then uh, you are allowed to work for 120 full days a cal calendar year or 240 half days a calendar year without requiring a permission. If you exceed that limit, then you do require permission to work. 
And it's important to know that these limits also apply to paid and unpaid internships. However, if you work as a student assistant at your university, that's exempt. So that, that doesn't count towards these 120 or 240 days. So, so as a law student, when I study in Germany University and then I graduate, so if I want to apply as a lawyer in Germany, is it possible or they have a regulation that you need to be a Germany citizen like in Indonesia, for example? Well, if you want to be a lawyer, there's no requirement uh, for you um, to be a German citizen. If you want to work as a judge or if you want to work um, for um, public administration, mm -hmm. then there will be, as a judge always, and public administration, in some cases, there will be a requirement that you're a German citizen. Um, in some jobs, there will be a requirement that you're a German or European Union citizen. Um, and in some, it doesn't make a difference. So you can be a lawyer no matter what your citizenship is. However, of course, if you start working as a lawyer, you require a work permit. Wow. Germany was really, really like a dream country to study, I think. And then what are good places or other than university to apply scholarship if students want to study in Germany? Like, uh, if well, um, basically, uh, I think uh, there are lots of lists in the internet. So there are lots of NGOs mm -hmm. that offer scholarships, and very often uh, they um, are aimed at students from so-called developing countries. Um, so, for example, all the uh, there are non-profit foundations uh, associated with all the major German political parties. Uh, they offer scholarships. So, for example, the Social Democratic Party, there's the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, uh, the Christian Democratic Union, there's the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, and they offer scholarships. Then uh, you have similar foundations associated with the churches or with business uh, communities. Um, and lastly, don't forget the, the German Academic Exchange Service, the DRAD, which also offers scholarships. Uh, the requirements are always, of course, based uh, on your previous results. So if you've already obtained a, a degree, they will look at your results. If you've only got a school certificate, they will look at those results in order to decide whether you get a scholarship. And in some cases, of course, it's also dependent on the wealth of your family. I see. Wow. That's really amazing, I think. And then um, I really know that your personality was really kind and down to earth and you really success as a professor and also dean and then you work a lot and you are very busy but you're really such a humble person in your life and in your career and then until now that do you have your inspiration or maybe your motivation in your life that you maybe can share to people out there and especially for a young generation that you really love that motivation and that inspiration and can make your life really, really lovable and success. Well, I think everybody has to find his own inspiration. I think I enjoy teaching. I enjoy working together with young people and trying to explain things. Um, I also enjoy my research and of course, especially uh, as you probably have gathered, um, my research interest is public international law, which of course is very relevant to all the crises um, worldwide. And I guess one always hopes that one can influence things a bit by publishing that article or this article and that one can sort of further the argument. Uh, but then of course, um, I think basically, you know, in order to lead a positive life, what we all need is health. Uh, and I think that's luck to some extent, you know. Yeah. And it seems like you really love book and you really love to reading a book, writing a book. It's obvious that from your background that you really call like a big book. And then I believe that a good leader is a good reader. So that's, is who you are 
and thank, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Patrick, for uh, thanks. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very and much. And to sharing your knowledge and experience about studying German and about your life, your inspiration to all the people, and hopefully that so many young generation out there can be influenced and if uh, they have a benefit from your conversational today. So I really appreciate Thank you very much and uh, hopefully uh, the one or the other watching it will decide to study. Yes. Okay. <laughs>